You can be off the road on a sidewalk and always take it off your ears when you have any cross street that you have to be on. I think that's an important safety measure. If you do use headphones near traffic, keep the volume low and keep one ear uncovered. For more good advice, I'd like to recommend these three books, which you should be able to find in your local bookstore. There's Pace Walking by Dr. Stephen Jonas. There's Rockport's Fitness Walking by Robert Sweetgall. And Fitness Walking for Women by Ann Cashua and Dr. James Rippey. I'd also like to invite you to join me and doctors all over the country on Saturday, May 14th for an event called Walk With Your Doc. We'll be walking in 95 communities to raise money for the American Diabetes Association. For more information, you can call your local ADA chapter or your community hospital. Tomorrow, we're going to show you how to put some more variety into your walks. Jane? Do walkers get the carbohydrate load the night before like marathon runners do? They actually don't need to. Walking is such a, works at such a reasonable intensity level that unless you're going to be going out on an extremely long walk, you don't have to push it the night before. Never mind the spaghetti. Fun. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Right. And we'll be back after this. There are those in love with the sea. I just love being here out at sea. Some are dreamers. And Ruth, we have you to thank for this. Some are skeptics. Or blame. <laughs> Mr. Excitement rides again. Over the years at Holland America Line, we've learned to appreciate the differences. Some want almost nothing. Others want everything. Still others want nothing and everything all at once. At Holland America Line, we never forget whose vacation it is. I've been spoiled now. <laughs> everybody, pay everybody to root. First of all, for putting up with Richard. Oh, and for having this idea. The joy of doing what you want, the art of going your own way. Come, discover them aboard the ocean liners of Holland America Line. How do you figure your financial future? How do you get an advantage? Look for an edge. Look for a company that can sharpen your opportunities in mutual funds, pensions, IRAs, employee benefit plans, insurance, and much more. Look for the principal edge from the principal financial group. One of America's largest, helping people with the fine points of their financial future, the principal. Look for the edge. Well, if it isn't Clark Riley's ex-fiancé, uh, Lisa, right? Hello, Clark. I see you're still eating from the two major food groups, sugar and preservatives. And you're still eating Nutribrain. It's good for you. It's good for you, too. You still care? The surprising taste of Nutrigrain almond raisin with no preservatives and no sugar added. So do I get a bowl? <laughs> Is this a new Lisa? People change. Kellogg's Nutrigrain. Dedicated to the ones we love. Time just enough to say goodbye. Goodbye. They know that it's deadly. They know it has to be stopped. What they don't know is how. What the hell is this thing? Something is out there. Sunday. Our first guest played a nasty villain on a show called Wise Guy by the name of Sonny Steelgrave. And what's unusual about all this is when they killed this character off, the fans went absolutely crazy. Well, we've got Sonny back. Let us welcome Ray Sharkey. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Have a seat. Now, Wise Guy is produced by Cannell Productions. Now, for those of you who don't know who Stephen Cannell is, he's the guy at the end of the show who you see typing at the typewriter, you know, and he and then, and it goes into his logo. Right. Now, what happened here? What, why did they kill you off, first of all? Well, when we, uh, <clears throat> when we started the show back in February last year, uh, they gave me the script and I read it, and, you know, I don't know, the trend seems to be uh, to make just so many shows now in, in, on television, so uh, they, only, uh, they only signed this to... Uh, a certain amount of shows and then they got picked up midway and we did the rest and at, at that point um, we didn't know that the response was going to be so good and we'd already shot the, 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 the end the, the, the end yeah and uh, the end was so good that the the producer 
uh, the executive producer who also wrote that last segment was, no, no, we can't, no, no, we can't let him go on. We can't let him go on. Because the show, the, the, the last two episodes were really so good. So they thought, well, okay, we'll just, we'll just go on with something else. And by that time, the uh, manure had hit the fan, so to speak. <laughs> they received, as I understand it, more mail mm -hmm. about that than anything they'd ever done, any previous character who had left the show. What do you think made that character so compelling to the viewers? Uh, aside from the fact that he was Republican? <laughs> I think that uh, I think that he I think that he the way he the way he lived his life you know vicariously he he, en he enjoyed himself he had a good time and his values were were definitely uh, American and and he had a good time uh, he had fun being bad you know and I think we like to watch people having fun being bad and uh, I think the relationship between both guys was was the most interesting. When I watch it, that's what I see. I see the chemistry between these two guys and, and, and like the kind of fun they have. And uh, I wish, you know, I, I wish I could, I could do it. I'm, I mean, I, I have other things to do. And, and at the time, I had told them, listen, I'm telling you now, guys, you know, uh, time's up and, and, and they're gonna love us and, and you're gonna want us back, but so why don't we just do it now? And they were, no, no, we have to stick with the schedule. And then a couple of months later, they, they were sorry. And that was it. That well, was we're going to tell anybody who's a fan out there, we're going to tell you how you can get involved in all this, how you can maybe tell the head of the entertainment division at CBS what yeah. you think and all that. Because yeah. fans like to get involved, and it really does count, doesn't it? It sure does. They listen to you. I mean, they take all the letters. I know when people write, they think they're not going to, you know, they're not going to read my letter. But they do. They have people who do nothing but take the letters, read them, and bring them to the boss, the head of the network. And he sits there, and he, and he reads them all. And if he likes them, he... Uh, he really thinks about it. So if you if you want the show to come back, and I think it's going to come back, I'm almost positive. Uh, and, and whatever you want, just write to Kim Masters. He's the president at CBS. I don't have the address. I'm we'll sure show, we'll show it. All right. Hey, so so stick with us here. We'll show the address. And also, if you have any questions for Ray, five seven eight zero seven zero seven is our number. Give us a call right here. AM Cleveland is next. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Ray Sharkey of Wise Guy. Sonny Von Bulow's daughter on the heartbreak and new help for victims of head injuries and their families. Sex therapist Sherry Lehman and our anniversary contest question and answer number three. All coming up next on AM Cleveland. If you're having trouble fitting into your summer clothes, call Living Well right now and get started for only $16.86 a month. That's $16.86 a month. So call now. Hurry. Limited time offer. chocolate so wonderfully indulgent you'll want no distractions only Cadbury is that rich that creamy it's so nice to be alone with your Cadbury any Cadbury now at Kmart you can get 33 portraits for the hard to believe price of 1495 can this be right? 33 portraits for $14.95? Yes, ma'am. You get two 8x10s, three 5x7s, 15 wallets, 12 all-occasion caption portraits, plus a 10x13 wall portrait, all for $14.95. Uh, that sure is a lot of portraits for $14.95. Is this right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. At Kmart, you get 33 portraits for only $14.95. Two 8x10s. Good morning and welcome to AM Cleveland. Today on the show, we have Ray Sharkey of Wise Guy. Also, sex therapist Sherry Lehman is going to examine your cheating heart. Also, Sonny Von Bulow's daughter, her name is Ala Auersberg, on the heartbreak and new help for victims of coma and head injuries and their families. Also, our fifth anniversary contest, question and answer number three. So stay tuned this morning. I'm Kim Scott. Right now, let's welcome the host of AM Cleveland, Scott Newell. Thank you, Kim. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you much. And again, let us welcome from Wise Guy, Ray Sharkey. He's ready to go. I, first of all, I want you to know you have one heck of a fan here. What's yes. your name? Vicki Banda. What do you like about that show? 
Uh, well, to tell you the truth, after Ray left, I did not watch it. After you, Sonny got killed off, I stopped watching it, and I don't even know what happened to Vinny, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did happen to Vinny? Vinny went on to another, another family, another case, and a couple of more maniacs, and uh, Vinny's doing well. All right. Well, you know what? Let's, you like that show, don't you? I'd like to, yes. I'd say I like the show. Let's take a look at the <laughs> scene from the show where Ray's in it, Great. the way you remember it. Great. Yeah. All right. All Let's right. take a look right now. That was one of my favorite lines in the whole show. I know you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you know. We were saying that all night to each other. I know you know. <laughs> You have played some pretty tough guys, and what was your childhood like? Was it tough? Yeah, pretty tough. I grew up in Brooklyn, in South Brooklyn, Red Hook, and, um, well, I mean, now that I look back on it, I guess it was tough. I wouldn't, wanna, I wouldn't want my kid to do that. Sometimes I think that. Um, meaning I wouldn't want him fighting all day and night in the streets and stuff like that, but uh, was as that I you? got out of Were you fighting all day and night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this stuff It was comes fun. It comes pretty naturally then. When you're acting in a scene like this, obviously, since you've been through the real thing, yeah. you know what it's really supposed to be like. How does that help you out? Well, it, it makes it easier in terms of what, what you're thinking and what you're feeling. It, 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 makes, it makes it easier. But uh, it, the, the minute that they know that you know something about what you're playing, they start writing big speeches for you. And they start writing all these lines that you that, you know, spend all night learning. So it, that makes it harder, you know, you have to sort of, and also you have to, uh, you have to learn to be a little more subtle about it. You have to be, nothing is fun unless you add some intelligence to it, you know. It, you have to come from another direction. I mean, it's not just, it's not fun just coming out and being tough. You've got to say something about it in your work, and uh, that's fun. You had a question? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Ray, are you planning on doing any movies since you're not in the series anymore? Yeah. As a matter of fact, when I left the series, I did a movie with uh, Gary Busey. It's less like a modern-day pirate movie. It'll be out in the summer. And in two weeks, I'm going back to Hollywood to film uh, Wired, the book about John Belushi. We're making a movie out of it. Yeah. And I think that that movie is a very important movie. It's the best anti-drug movie to come out of Hollywood in years. Ray, and, uh, since you brought the subject up, it's no secret that uh, you've had your run-in with drugs, huh? Yep. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, uh, growing up in Brooklyn and uh, growing up in the, in the streets, uh, I had my encounters with uh, hard drugs and, um, you know, grew up into it. It was sort of like a lifestyle, you know, growing up in the 60s and stuff like that. And um, eventually, <clears throat> eventually when I... When I became successful, you know, and made a lot of money, I, I, I thought, well, this is what I'll do. I'll just do this, and it, and it won't hurt me because, you know, I'm I'm rich and successful, and, and I'm living in Hollywood. And uh, boy, was I in for a shock, you know. Uh, little did I know, after a few years, I was uh, I was on my derriere and uh, went and got some help, and uh, haven't had anything stronger than a Tylenol in a couple of years. Very good. All right. Wired, uh, the story of John Belushi is a powerful book, and I'm sure it'll be a powerful movie, and we'll look forward to seeing you. Then. All right. Let's take some calls. Hi. Hi, Ray. Welcome to Cleveland. Yeah. I'd like to tell you that we adored you on Wise, Wise Guy. My kids stayed up late every Monday night to watch it, and we bowl with a guy who we call Sonny Steelgrave because he looks just like you. And, uh, we'd all, and we'd also like to know how you enjoyed doing the crime story series and working with Anthony Dennis and that because you were great on there, too. Thanks a lot. All right, well, first of all, let's get this guy Sonny out of the bowling hall and take care of him. Uh, I, I had a great time uh, in Chicago uh, doing Crime Story. Um, Tony Dennis and all those guys, you know, as a matter of fact, the guys that wrote Wise Guy were some of the writers on Crime Story, and that's how I met them. And so they were, uh, they were well versed in how I worked because of Crime Story. Yeah, it seems like a perfect match. It really does, the style of the two shows. And for those people who want to make sure yeah. that Wise Guy gets back on the air, what do they write? 
They write to Kim Masters at CBS. He's the president, and the address of CBS is on the screen somewhere. That's 7800 Beverly Boulevard, yeah. Los Angeles, California, 90036. And Kim will listen to your letters. That sounds like Television City in Hollywood. That's Actually, it is. It's uh, TV City. That's where they, film close, all the where they shoot a lot of shows right. right there. And make sure you... We'll leave that up there. We've got that on the Scott line, too, if you'd like to uh, You know, <clears throat> about... Uh, you, uh, let me see, about... Eight years ago, nine years ago, we screen tested Ken Wall for The Idol Maker as one of the kids in it. And so when I got up to Vancouver, I had never met him. And there he was. He was no longer a little kid. You know, and there he was standing there. And he's, the first thing he said was, yeah, you know, I didn't get the part. You know? <laughs> but it was, it, I mean, it was, it was great karma that the both of us got a chance to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, as opposed to what we would, we would have done like eight years ago in the movies. They're both, both doing okay, both doing real well. We're going to take a little bit of a break. We'll okay. be back with more of Ray Sharkey here, so stick right. with us. She talks about those family ties that bind and gag. Irma Bombeck joins us tomorrow on AM Cleveland. White collar. White tie. White lie. White wine. White cap. White House, White Hunter, White Heat, White Linen, the crisp, refreshing fragrance from Estee Lauder. You know how to wear it. Now at Higby's. Introducing the amazing Friendly Kids Meal Deal. What do you think it costs for one of five delicious meals, french fries, ice cold drink, and any of five different sundaes? Well, Two hundred and ninety-nine thousand bucks. Fifty? Hmm. Fifty-five hundred. Seven dollars. <laughs> nope. Only ninety-nine cents. Are you sure? Yeah. The friendly ninety-nine cent kids meal deal. Every day, one kid twelve or under per adult buying a regular price meal. I saw that. <laughs> Interesting journal, Sam. Interesting to us, Gary. But you've got to stop boring everyone you meet by telling them about what you read in dental journals. Like my party guest last night and our waitress at lunch today. Well, I'm sure our patients at American Dental Centers would think so. But I guess I get carried away sometimes. Like when you try to tell that two-year-old in the mall about temporal mandibular joint dysfunction? He looked interested. Braces, $1,800. No down payment, $75 per month. No financing charges. A message from the Plant Advisory Board. Life used to be tough here. Know why? Because of weeds. They were always stealing our food. And they blocked out the sun. They tried to choke me. But things are great now, thanks to new Preen and Green. Preen and Green prevents weeds all season while it feeds to keep us strong and healthy. And it's delicious. So try new Preen and Green. Because the best way to weed is not to. Preen and Green prevents weeds as it fertilizes. Recommended by America's favorite plants. How would you like to drive away in this beautiful 1988 Chevrolet Cavalier VL? It's as easy as watching AM Cleveland. We're celebrating our fifth anniversary, and we're doing it with an AM Cleveland anniversary contest. The winner will drive away in this beautiful 1988 Chevy Cavalier furnished by Tim Lally Chevrolet on the Bedford Auto Mile. Let's take it for a test drive. The list of options for this 1988 Chevy Cavalier VL includes fuel-injected four-cylinder engine, independent front suspension, rack and pinion steering, AM-FM stereo radio, automatic transmission, front wheel drive, and power disc brakes. The contest is going on right now. Each morning, we will ask an AM Cleveland anniversary fact question leading into a commercial break. When we come back from the break, we'll reveal the answer. All you have to do is write down each answer each day, then mail all 22 correct answers on one piece of paper to A.M. Cleveland's 5th Anniversary Contest, 1403 East 6th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44114. You can also pick up a questionnaire with the questions only at Tim Lally Chevrolet, 500 Broadway, and mail them to A.M. Cleveland. Entries must be received by Monday, June 6, 1988. One winning entry will be drawn at random live on A.M. Cleveland on Friday, June 20th. So sit back. A cup of coffee and relax with AM Cleveland. And just for watching, you might be driving this brand new car. Ray 
Syracuse, our guest. From a wise guy. Boy, you got your fans out here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was wondering, uh, I heard the TV shows usually work 12 to 14 hours a day. Do you find that hard on you? Yeah, <clears throat> after about, uh, after the 12th hour, it gets real hard. Uh, the work gets easy, but it's, it's staying awake that's hard, you know, because uh, you just walk from one mark to the other and you don't know what you're doing half the time. But you a lot get, of people don't it. realize this. When you're shooting something like that, there are a lot of resetting the camera angles, all that. Sometimes you have one, two hours in between shots, and you're supposed to pick up that energy just as if you left off. It's oh, yeah. from one to the other. How in the world do you do that? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, what, what I do is, uh, what, what we did on the show is we always stayed close to the camera. We always stayed around the set. We didn't go in the trailers and sleep and eat and all that. We stayed around the set because uh, we knew that we knew that we had to work that fast. So yeah. you're always you're always geared up, you know, and you get Saturdays and Sundays off, so it's not bad. Yeah, you gotta kick in real fast. Yeah. Is it gonna be repeats this summer or what? Yeah, I think they start in a few weeks. They'll start with uh, um, the, the, the original pilot and then they'll go all through uh, Sunday's episodes. Gary up for next fall. Yeah. Yeah. All right, to the phone. Hi, you're on with Ray. Yes, hello. I wanted to say that I've never before written to any uh, television series or a star or anything, but I'm definitely going to write in on this one because I enjoyed Ray very much on uh, Wise Guy, and I also enjoyed him on The Idol Maker, and I think that's what makes Wise Guy so successful is that he was a very intense actor and really brought that character to life. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to ask more about your personal life, such as, are you married? <laughs> no, I'm single. <laughs> are you interested? Well, <laughs> if my husband isn't watching. <laughs> uh, little details, details like that. It's hard to be married in, uh, in Hollywood. It really is. Yeah. The people that have been married for a long time, God bless them. Back to the phone. Hi, you're on with Ray. Yes, I'd like to say that I already wrote to Kimla Masters. We think that show is one of the best. And my daughter wrote to You Care of Wise Guy about three months ago. Is there a chance she'll get her autographed picture sometime? What was her name? Jennifer McClure. She's 15. She loves that show. Mm. Well, uh, it takes a while for the, to go from CBS to, to, to my mailing address. And I answer every, every letter I get. So I'm sure I'll get her a picture or whatever she wants. So it may be, uh, is Caller still there? No. But you might just say hi to Jennifer out there anyway. That's probably better than an autograph picture yeah. anyway. Huh? Hi, Jennifer. How you doing, sweetheart? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, of course, she's in school, but Mom is taping that, so you'll have that on tape forever and ever. Let's, uh, oh, okay, let's not take another call. They, uh, let's talk about when you make a movie like Wired. How do you get the job like that? Well, you know, I didn't know anything about it. This just happened last week. Uh, I didn't know anything about it because the, the, let me give you a back, a backlog for a second here. Uh, the movie is about, uh, John wakes up in the morgue in a body bag and it's not a comedy. It's a, it's a drama and he wakes up and he's scared. He doesn't know where he is. He runs outside and he meets a cab driver who's a, a Puerto Rican from Manhattan and he gets into the cab and the cab driver is an angel sent from heaven who overdosed eight years ago and who really is John's alter ego. And uh, John says, where are you taking me? And he says, I'm going to take you on a trip of your life and show you the error of what you've done. And so the, I play the angel. And uh, what he does is he, he really takes him through his life, his childhood, so on and so forth, and shows him that it, you know, what he did was not, <laughs> was not right. You know? And he's already dead, so there's no contracts they're going to make. There's no deals. He just wants him to see uh, what he did with his life before he takes him to heaven. And uh, I think that what happened was every Spanish actor in the country wanted the part, and there was something missing. And the director, his name is Larry Pierce, a very good director, he, he said, wait a minute, I know a guy who could play this, you know. Uh, you know and, he, and he thought of me because what, I mean, that's what I do. I go and, uh, and carry the message about uh, drug abuse to, to people all over the country. And so he took that angle as opposed to the physical uh, Latino angle. He said, Here's a guy who's really going to believe what he's saying, and he really could be an angel. So that's how I got the part. Is that going to be a theatrical release? Or yeah, it'll be in the movies. In the theaters. Yeah. 
you prefer movies to television? Doesn't matter. It, 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 you know, some things work better on television and some things work better in the theater. Obviously, uh, it, it, it's, it's easier to work in the movies because you get more time and sometimes you need to, to curse, sometimes you need to do things that you cannot necessarily do on television. And sometimes there's a project that needs 50, 60 million people to see it in one night, and so you do it on television. A good point, because yeah. the audience on television is one whopping big audience. You would have to make 10 Star Wars yeah. <laughs> and be the star and, in order for enough people to see you that, that see you one night yeah. you know, on television. Let's take some phone calls. Hi, you're on with Ray. Uh, hello, Ray. Hi. 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 Do you know Eddie Ross Pagliaro? I sure do. This is his mom. Hey! I have a man on you. <laughs> That's great. Hi, Mom. Hi. I That's told great. Eddie. I told Eddie. I says, Eddie. I says, you have to bring Ray here. I'll make him a spaghetti dinner. Oh, if I'd have known you were here last night, I went over to your house for dinner. Oh. <laughs> who, now, who is this? Eddie Ross Pagliaro is a, a, a young, up-and-coming actor. Good kid. Uh, real ni and your son is a very nice boy. You did a great job of bringing him up. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. He was a prize fighter. He was in Wise Guy. It was his first job, and he was nervous, and he was playing a prize fighter who uh, got killed, and he was Vinny's cousin. And uh, he was nervous, and, and we had a mutual friend in, in, in Los Angeles, so he came up and he introduced himself. And I sort of coached him and took him under my wing, and he did a great job, and we've been friends ever since and talked to each other on the phone. And he's a real happy Mother's Day, Mom. That's nice. That you happy call Mother's up. Day, Miss Pagliaro. Right. Well, Ray, I sure enjoyed having you here. I wish you the best of luck. We'll look for Wired. We'll yes, look sir. for Wise Guy. It's going to come back. Uh huh. Right? It'll be back in a couple of weeks. And the reruns will be on. And listen, I'm almost positive. Uh, now, this is unofficial, of course, even though we're on television that uh, I, I'm almost sure the show's going to get picked up and it'll be on in September. But it, that is no assurance, so make sure you get those letters in yeah. to oh, CBS. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, the address is on the Scott line, 344-3391. That's uh, where President we have all of the, the information company, all the time. Yeah. And you yeah. can do that. Thank Good you. luck. We'll, we'll look My for pleasure. you. Thanks for stopping by in Cleveland. Ray Sarkey. <laughs> if you lust in your heart, does it mean you're going to cheat? We'll find out in just a second. Here's question number three in our A.M. Cleveland 5th Anniversary Contest. Who composed A.M. Cleveland's theme song? Make sure you've got something to write down the answer with, because we'll give you the answer right after this commercial break. Are you tired of cereals that have over-sugared, over-fibered, and generally toyed with your breakfast? If you're ready for honest taste in a cereal, you're ready for new Quaker Oats Squares. Wholesome, honest-to-goodness Quaker Oats Squares. Quaker Oats toasted in a crispy, crunchy little squares with delicious whole grain taste. Honest taste from an honest face. New Quaker Oats Squares. At Pearl, we know there are lots of reasons to get a spare pair of glasses. For reading, of course. For sports, you know, b-ball. Oh, these go with my outfits. Well, now at Pearl, you can get that second pair free. I lose stuff. Just buy a complete pair of glasses, present the coupon from TV Guide or Woman's Day, and that spare pair of glasses is yours. For the best reason of all. Hey, they're free. If you have a cat, by the way, this is Be Kind to Animals Week, so it's a good time to think about your cat, and you've been feeding your cat that canned food all the time, I want you to try something a little bit different. Your cat will think it's a treat. It's called Bill Jack Sunday Dinner Cat Food. The name Sunday Dinner Cat Food comes from the fact that the Bill Jack folks would like you to try it this Sunday, Mother's Day. Some cats are mothers too, you know. And try your cat on Bill Jack. It's fresh frozen. You find it in the freezer section of your grocery store. Your cat will love the treat and start asking for it all the time. Bill Jack Sunday Dinner Cat Food. Woolworth Dollar Days are here again. Shop this week and save on GE Soft White Bulbs. Special 8-pack, just $3 after instant rebate. Pack of two 3-way bulbs, $2 after instant rebate. Plus a carnival of great candy values. 
these at just one dollar each or pick any three of these for one dollar and chewy jellies or ice and creamy bars your choice only 139 this week during Woolworth's big dollar day sale don't miss it who composed am cleveland's theme song it was scott newell write down the answer only and save it we'll give you question and answer number four on tomorrow's program Hope you're playing along. Great contest. You ever notice that some spouses seem to always look at members of the opposite sex? Is that true? Sure is. Who are we talking about? <laughs> My husband. <laughs> well, would you describe his style? Anything that looks good. <laughs> Does that bug you? No. No. If it's... he didn't look, I'd be unhappy. <laughs> Well, if your spouse or you lust in your heart, does that mean eventually you're going to go out and have an extramarital affair? Let's ask our expert here, Sherry Lehman. Good morning. Good morning. And Sherry, since we're right here, do you worry about him having an affair? No. Not at all. No. So does that doesn't necessarily mean that if you like to look at the menu that you're going to sample a couple of the entrees, right? Absolutely not. I think most men and women look at members of the opposite sex. I think it's healthy. I think it's normal. The only problem is when you are with your mate and you are looking like this and trip over the curb or walk into a telephone pole, it could be a problem. Who else raised their hand when I asked that question? You did too. What's, who is it that looks? My husband. Yeah? Yeah. Huh, does he do it a lot? Oh yeah, a lot. I tell him that's all right as long as he don't touch. <laughs> Just, do you look at the other men? Sure. There you go. That's a wonder, you know, that's a wonderful attitude, and I commend both of you, because a lot of us get really upset. We, get, we feel real insecure when we're with a man and he's looking around. We think maybe we're not pretty enough, and we don't realize that that is normal behavior. And men are very visually oriented, Scott. They get turned on by looking. I think a little more so than women, although we're catching up. <laughs> How often do the lookers and the people who like to lust in their heart turn to having an affair? I would say that it isn't that often, although we know statistics are rising on those people that have affairs. Lookers are usually lookers. Uh, the ones that have affairs may not even look as much, may not be quite as obvious. Statistics show that about 60 to 70 percent of married men have affairs at least once in their married lives, and women now are catching up, about 60 to 65 percent. So there are quite a few people out there getting busy or having been busy. Let's go out and be busy with the folks at home. Hi, you're on AM Cleveland. Hi, Scott. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Good morning. I just want to say lusting and going after it isn't worth it because if you see somebody that you like in your mind if you're married and it always looks better than when it happens, it's not worth it. That happened to you? Uh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> um, I had an affair about four years ago and I thought that this guy was so much better than my husband and um, thank God my husband didn't find out about it and um, I'm, I'm better off where I was to begin with. Everything looks better when you don't have it. And then when you go after it, it's like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have never did this in the first place. How long did it take you to figure out this uh, new guy wasn't all hot stuff? Um, not very long. <laughs> a couple weeks, maybe. And I just decided that that wasn't for me. And it's over and it's gone away and you're all right now? Exactly. Your husband never found out? No. Sherry? Well, I think she is right, that usually it is not worth it. And if you talk to people who've had affairs, they will tell you, if only they could get on TV, they're a little uncomfortable. They would tell people, don't do it. You hurt so many people. You have the danger of infection. I have a lot of men giving their wives herpes now or vice versa from an affair. Sometimes the other person ends up like in fatal attraction, calling your home, ruining your lives. Uh, usually when you leave one mate for another, that doesn't turn out because, as she said, what looks great when you don't have it, once you get it, has a lot of problems, too. You know, when you're dealing with money and kids and exes and alimony and child support and in-laws, 
lots of problems. Yep, they're all there, too, just like everybody. Waiting yes. for you. And if she looks like Glenn Close, be careful. It <laughs> could be trouble. No, that's true. I think anybody who's even thinking about it, they see that movie. You've, you've heard this, that everybody walks out of that theater and says, geez, I wouldn't even think about having an affair now. They do for the moment. For, for the for 24 hours. I would like hours, to tell yeah. you that that stays, but with a lot of people it doesn't. You see, we're more susceptible at critical times in our lives too, Scott. When you're having a job change or a move or your wife is pregnant, there's a new baby in the family, we reach our 49th birthday or our 59th. And even though I might say today I would never do that, there are critical times to be aware of. We should be aware of those critical times then and make sure that doesn't happen. Think about it ahead of time. Yep. Don't let your emotions take over too easily. Or the way people say, it just happened. Yeah, I mean, give me yeah, a break. Right. No affair just happens. It's all planned. It's true. To the telephone. Hi, you're on with Sherry. Hi, can you tell me how to build my trust in somebody? Well, I think it takes a long time. I think it takes a lot of communication. And I think the other person has to make an all-out effort, especially if they've had an affair. It takes two to four years sometimes of that person saying, I'm sorry, I love you, it won't happen again. Be patient. I mean, I think it's worth it, even when an affair happens in a marriage. Another call. Hi, you're on with Sherry Lehman. Oh, hi. Good I just morning. have a comment to make. I feel that when you're out with your husband, that he should be paying more attention to you than any other else because my husband does the same thing he turns around and makes me feel kind of bad you know when i'm sitting there with him and he's checking out any other girls i just think that they should be paying more attention to you well i think your comment is right i'm not saying that it's okay if you're out and your mate doesn't look at you for five minutes and he's busy or she's busy looking around yes i think each of us wants to be the primary person that that person looks at. But it is normal to kind of check out the rest of the merchandise. So if you have a little lust in your heart, doesn't necessarily mean that anything's wrong. No, as long as you don't become obsessed. Yeah. Then that, that's another problem. Sherry, I thank you so much. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day to you. I am a mother. We will return. are the strangest of all the hit songs. Weird Al Yankovic joins us live later this week on AM Cleveland. Come on, not another cooking class. Yes. Ah. You want to join us? Tonight is the fine art of snacking. No way. I'm just going to grab a handful of these eagle chips and run. You don't run while eating eagle chips. It's snacking elevated to its highest form. I'm elevating the chip now. Mmm, delicious. Oh, I gotta have some of those eagle honey roast nuts. Ah, oh, the sweet crunchiness. Why don't you stay for class? The delirious. I'm gonna take some for later. Gotta go. Hi. We're here. Hi. When does class begin? Eagle snacks. Everyone loves them. Stuff, no salt. Bet you didn't know I get tap dance. America's number one salt and sodium free diet cola with NutraSweet. Do you worry about crime in your neighborhood? And it's scary. It's worse than it was 10 or 15 years ago. It's like this all over. I always make sure I have somebody with me when I'm going somewhere late at night. It seems that if a determined criminal wants your car, there's not a whole lot you can do. It's really a bad feeling to come home and find out that. What you had is gone. Where are you most susceptible to crime? And how can you protect yourself? Enter the Danger Zones, tonight at 11 on Channel 3 News. Welcome back to AM Cleveland. When is a head injury serious? We're going to find out in just a few moments. Right now, an update of news and weather with Dale Donahue. And once again, the host of AM Cleveland, Scott Newell. Hi, nice, Jim. Good morning, Dale. Morning, Scott. Morning, Kim. Morning, everybody. We have the Woodridge High School bunch out there, and we also have the Braceville Garden Club, who came out to see us, and we appreciate you coming by. You all look excellent today. And, uh... See, that would be Trumbull and Summit County, so I'll bet. That is correct, mm -hmm. I do believe. And I also... This is for Be Kind to Animals Week, which is uh, May 1st through 7th, by the way. Mm -hmm. 
and the North Coast Humane Society has a booth at the old arcade downtown. I was out there yesterday. If you'd like to stop by, they'll be there all week. And they have petitions there you can sign to limit the amount of research done on animals. And also, if you'd like to make some donations or volunteer or get information about spaying or neutering your pets, all very important things to think about this week and all year round. So stop out at the arcade sometime this week. Bell, you have some news for it's us. It's also Nurses Week, and we salute the nurses. We okay. salute them. Too. All right. Yes, in the news, there certainly seems to be no doubt now that Michael Dukakis will be the Democratic presidential nominee. He won yesterday's Ohio primary 2-1, to one, Indiana by a 3-1 to one margin over Jesse Jackson. Jackson, however, did win the Washington, D.C. primary. President Reagan's horoscope for today says that, among other things, he should make an outstanding performance at whatever he attempts. Now, the, the White House has acknowledged that both President and Mrs. Reagan are fascinated by astrology, but spokesmen denied that the decisions are based on a reading of the stars. In Akron, officials from the Bridgestone Corporation today are hoping to finalize their acquisition of Firestone Tire and Rubber Company, and they're putting out reassuring statements that the company's tire operations will remain in Akron. On the Kent State campus, a special program is to be held today commemorating the events of May 4th, 1970, when four students were killed in a confrontation with National Guardsmen. There was the traditional candlelight vigil on the campus last night. And the weather, hey, it's just beautiful. 50 degrees, sunny skies over Cleveland and over wherever it is your folks are from, all those good places. With our color radar tracking some showers down south, they tell us. They're not headed our way. Those must be just uh, some false echoes out there. The afternoon will be partly sunny and a 55 to 60 degree high. Tonight, a low of 40 to 45 and cloudy. Tomorrow, cloudy and 55 to 60. The Cavaliers, 110 to 102 victors yeah. over the Bullets. Yeah. Game three. And tomorrow night, they have a chance to even the series at two games apiece. And I'm sad about the Indians. They had another, another terrible ninth inning. Yep. And the Angels beat them eight to four when the bullpen collapsed again. We got to stop. We don't want to slip back to last year where the ninth inning was always the deciding inning. And it's been that way twice now, yep, just it recently. Sure has. And they're off for a swing through the West, stopping in Seattle tonight. Out there in that different time zone. We'll Thank get you, well Bill. out there. You bet. Okay. Kim? We have tickets for two to give away right now to a special Mother's Day performance at the Cleveland Ballet. They are performing the spring collection, which includes three ballets. This is for Sunday at 2 p.m. at the State Theater downtown. We want to know this morning, what is the meaning of the Indian word from which Geauga County is named? What is the meaning of the Indian word after which Geauga County is named? If you know the answer, 578-0707. Give us a call right now if you think you know the answer. What is the meaning of the Indian word after which Geauga County is named? 578-0707. Let's go to the phone right now. Good morning. Hi, you're on AM Cleveland. Is it country? No, not country. No, let's go back to the phone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, uh, do you know the answer? Yeah, I believe the name, uh, it's from uh, Raccoon. That's right, Raccoon is it. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. And what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Alan uh, Kewish. From? Uh, Mayfield. Congratulations. You just won two tickets to the special Mother's Day performance of the Cleveland Ballet on Sunday. I think Thank you'll enjoy that. Their, their, their uh, spring collection is going on right now. We need you to pick a number now from 1 to 61. Uh, 32. 32. 32. Yay! There she is. <laughs> Stand up so everybody can see you. There. What's your name? Betty Bevington. Where are you from? Well, I'm from with the Braceville. Uh, garden, garden Club. Club. Sure. Right, thank you for coming down here. <laughs> thank and you. I bet you your garden grows very well. <laughs> If you didn't win today, you have a chance to win our weekly prize. It is a dandy. Somebody who's in our audience this week is going to win a nice pair of earrings. They're 14 karat yellow gold framed genuine amethyst earrings valued at more than $400 furnished by Gold Masters Jewelry at Randall Park Mall. And if you'd like to come down and be part of the audience, be eligible for that this week, call 344-3311 until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And Milano Monuments of Flowers has provided everybody here with some nice roses for Mother's Day. You've got them all out there, and everybody this week is going to have those roses. A very nice gift. They're out there on Brook Park Road. In just a second, we are going to talk about the heartbreak and the hope for coma victims with Sonny Von Bulo's daughter, Ala Auerstedt. Ponderosa introduces all-you-can-eat dinners. Mm. Monday through Thursday, choose from our all-you-can-eat fried chicken mm. breasts. Sirloin tips, mm. fish fillets, and our new mm. spaghetti and meatballs. Each meal comes with an all-you-can-eat salad buffet mm -hmm. and Sunday bar, mm -hmm. all for just $5.99. And kids under 10 get mm -hmm. a kid's meal free. So take the family to Ponderosa 
and eat all you can eat. Ponderosa, we know the value of a good family meal. Hey, what's this stuff? Liquid dial. Why'd we switch? This one has germ killer. Her own liquid soap had germ killer. No, it didn't. Didn't? Nope. I thought it did. Uh-uh. What about the stuff before that? It didn't. It didn't? Never. Never? Never, ever. I thought it did. You thought wrong, dear. I did? You did. Mm-hmm. Of all liquid hand soaps, only New Liquid Dial has an antibacterial formula that kills germs. I know. I bet the stuff we had way back... Dad, it didn't. Nah, didn't. New Liquid Dial kills germs the others don't. Years ago, tragedy propelled the family of our next guest into the world's headlines. Klaus von Bülow was accused of trying to kill Sonny von Bülow, leaving her in a coma. It kind of spurred on our next guest to put together a videotape documentary called The Journey Back, Surviving Coma. And it happens to be about people in comas and also people who have suffered head injuries. Her father also suffered a head injury in an automobile accident and is now in a coma. Both her parents are in a coma. I want you to welcome Ala Auersberg. Good morning. You have really been through it. I think, yeah, I think the likelihood of having two parents who end up in the state that my parents are in has got to be a billion to one. What's been the toughest part for you? Understanding why. I mean, I don't think you ever understand why. You just sort of accept that it has happened and um, try to turn a horrible experience into some sort of a negative, which is really where we got involved in this. And, it, and turn it into something that really yeah. does something for people. Right. What is the cause of most head injuries and most comas? It's car accidents. And um, at least 50% of all head injuries in this country are caused by motor vehicle accidents. And at least half of those accidents are caused by drunk driving. And it's devastating because it's the number one killer of all those under 35. So it's hitting our younger generation. And it's an, an affliction that lasts for the rest of their lives with really difficult problems they have to surmount. When you're injured, when you suffer a head injury, how many people finally recover? Well, of the four to 500,000 who will be admitted to hospital this year and be admitted overnight, for instance, um, 100,000 of those will have difficulty, will have to be rehabilitated for the rest of their lives. And when I talk rehabilitation, it's learning how to pick up a glass of water and put on their clothes. And the horrible thing about it is that they will very often remember what their lives were like before and what they were going to do with their lives. So there's a kid who's been accepted to college and he knows that that's probably not too realistic and if it's anywhere in there it's way down the road. So it's a whole new it scheme. Is. Very difficult. Yeah. If you have any questions, 5780707 is our number here. Give us a call, 5780707. You looked at several different cases when you put together this documentary with David Hoffman. Could you explain the three different cases and especially one, Debbie? who was a girl who had, was in an auto accident, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. Debbie Price was in an, Debbie Price is Marilyn Spivak's daughter, and she's founded a huge support group through the United States. They help the families of, uh, of, of these victims. But um, Debbie was in an accident, was in coma for months, and will be spending the rest of her life in rehabilitation. And she's a charming, fascinating, sweet kid, but um, she has memory problems. She has problems putting together. She knows that there's a table there, and she, but she can't say it. Enormous problems that she's going to have to cope with for the rest of her life. In fact, you document this quite well. Yeah. You, you did some filming over there and watched her rehabilitation. And one of the toughest things it is for her is just learning how to recognize things, simple things. So let's take a look at a scene from Surviving Coma, The Journey Back, and see how hard it is for Debbie. What's this? Uh, milk. Okay. What's um, another word for that? Uh, it's not really milk. Milk. Um, Milk. In my coffee, I put in sugar and... Cream. Cream. Oh, okay. That's, that's what I'd use, I I'm think. sorry, that cream, one. sorry. Mm -hmm. Ketchup. Butter. God. Think of the two I, of them I, together. I, 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 and take your time. Now, without writing, let's try it. I'm sorry, see what you get I'm... 
butter, fit jelly, jelly, butter, green cheese, no. And my eggs, I want to put on some... Salt, salt and pepper. Okay, good. S salt, salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Right. Salt, salt and pepper. Okay, which is which? Salt. No. Salt, so, salt, so, salt. So. Mm. Hmm? Oh. Salt, salt and pepper. Very that's good. That, that's okay. Salt and pepper. Boy, that is difficult. What she, what sort of state of recovery is she in now? She's probably um, as far as she will go. She's not going to improve that much over the years. She might make small incremental improvements. This is the way Debbie's going to be spending her life. Now, I think her mom would like to move her to different kinds of facilities, some that are closer to the home. But um, she lives in a community setting with a lot of other kids who have this kind of affliction. And it's heartrending because you need... With other accidents, you'll see physical deficits. With a lot of the, these kids, you don't see anything physical. They can be really good-looking, attractive kids, and you won't know what's wrong with them until you start talking to them, and it's just a different world. The other two cases you looked at, yeah. can you explain? Patty Hogan is a girl from Providence, was also in a car accident um, a few years ago, really when we've gotten a lot further now in the rehab treatment we give. She had 22 operations on her joints. Mm. She is really recovered almost to the point. Um, she has some memory loss and she has a speech problem, but she's cognitively all there and she's been trying to go out and get a job. And it's the frustration of, of having put so much energy into recovering and really come an enormously long way and then gaining acceptance from the community because she has a speech problem, but she works, she writes on a, on a computer. And the last story is, is the Jobs family, which is a big case in New Jersey where um, Nancy Ellen Jobs was in a vegetative state, which means she has no cognitive function. She doesn't know what's going on around her, like my parents. And the family moved to have her discontinued from feeding and hydration. And that's one of the big ethical issues that we have out there right now. And we tried to look at it from a, really what they were going through. And we don't take one side or the other, but really to look at the issue. It's a, it's a heart-rending family issue. It's difficult. Something you've had to deal with. Families have to deal with a lot of different problems. Yeah. Uh, financial, emotional, yeah. it's very, very tough. We'll look at some of those and see one portion of this. You will not believe what some of the families have to go through and how they help each other out. Stay with us, please. People who care what they eat are learning some surprising things about calories. One surprising thing is that the white meat you see here contains fewer calories than anything else on the plate. But the most surprising thing is that this white meat is pork. Pork, the other white meat. I really treasure my independence. I like having lots of activities or just enjoying my privacy. That's why I moved to my apartment in Columbus Park. Now I can travel whenever I like and come home to people like me. Columbus Park is a carefree, affordable community, and I feel comfortable here. Suites available from $365. For more information about how to put more life in your lifestyle, call 439-6689. Columbus Park, good neighbors and friends. Eat smart, smart, smart. Kids, they're smart. They know what they like. And when it comes to yogurt, they prefer the Light and Lively Six Pack to the Dan and Six Pack. La, 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 light and lively, eat smart. Kids prefer it. It's fruity and creamy, and it's already mixed. Feed your body the way that you should. That's good. La, 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 light and lively, 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 eat smart. The Six Pack kids like best. Hi, Jimmy. Great game. Thanks. A big guy like you eats Charms Blow Pops? The whole team likes them. You mean you like all that hard candy on the outside? You bet. And all that soft bubble gum inside? I wish I had a Blow Pop. You do, huh? Wow, thanks. Jimmy, can I tell the guys who eat Charms Blow Pops? Sure. Blow Pops, America's number one pop from Charms. Every 12 minutes, a head injury results in death. One out of 10 of even moderate head injury victims suffer severe disability. Our guest is Ala Arsberg, who is the daughter of Sonny Von Bulow. She's put together a documentary called Surviving Coma, The Journey Back. The families, how do they get through all of this? The financial burden, the emotional burden, all at once. It's 
it's horrendously difficult. Um, family support. Um, National Head Injury Foundation, for instance, is a group that of families of coma victims, and they they support each other. They um, they do an enormous. They have 52 chapters through the United States, and I think that's one way that they're able to help each other. Years ago, there was no support system, so people didn't know how to get refunded for medical bills. Where to go? I mean, where do you take one of these kids for the proper rehab training? I mean, sometimes if they've been in coma for a long period of time, you've got to retrain all the muscles. It's just a horrendously long process. The families do help support each other they because do. they're going through the same things. In fact, one of the things you look at in the documentary is a group of people who are really discussing some of the problems, and sometimes they can be very, very tough. Let's look now at a little bit of that. Three years after the accident, she still had a tracheotomy so that he could suction her passageway out in case it filled up with mucus. And he told me how he was out mowing the lawn one day and he heard her coughing and he felt if he hadn't run in on time and suctioned her out that she probably would have died at that time. At that time, I said to him, I said, you know, my daughter sits up in a chair, she can feed herself, she can talk, she can tell us she has to go to the bathroom. She's probably about a hundred times better than yours, and I'm not happy. And uh, I said, I think the next time you hear a cop, don't run in. You have, you have had to face some of those times, too. What, what's been the most difficult decision you've had to make? I was very happy that I didn't have to make the decision about stopping life support. First of all, my mother isn't on life support, for instance. But um, a lot of families have, inc have incredible problems with it. I think the most important thing to come out of it and to, to have us realize is that we really have to confront our own mortality. Um, I don't know what my mother would have wanted in this situation, so therefore I've never made that decision. If I had known, I would have acted on it. But I think it's terribly important for us to discuss with our families and think about writing a living will. Tell your family how you feel about it so that your family members don't have to agonize over, over pulling feeding hydration or pulling, you know, respirator. Yeah. Very hard. Yes. I'd like to know uh, if you have any opinion on euthanasia and uh, any legislation on that. Well, that's really what I was just going into. I th it's a very, very difficult and, and personal issue. I mean, personally, I think that we ought to be able to, m to make a decision now as to how we would want to be kept alive. And in the vegetative state, which is um, what my mom is in, you know, there's no, there's no cognitive function going on. So she's alive. Her body's been kept alive, but she has no recognition of the environment. And there are 10,000 cases like that in the United States today. So I think you have to tell your family how you feel about it. And, um, and then your family, depending on what state you live in, or do a living will, you know, can know how to react. And I want to mention that on May the 24th here on AM Cleveland, we will devote the whole hour to euthanasia. It's a difficult ethical question. We will have people on both sides, people who say you should have the right to die and other people who say, no, you should do everything you can to keep somebody alive. It should be an interesting discussion. We have people coming in from all over the country for that one. Yes. I was wondering if um, survivors of comas ever completely recover. I know they, they make miraculous improvements, but do they ever completely recover? It really depends on what kind. Every single injury is different. Every single accident is different. So it depends on how long they've been in coma, how severe the accident was, where the injury is. But what we do know is that they tend to improve faster in the beginning, and then it tends to slow. So some, it just depends on where they were hurt. Your documentary is called Surviving Coma, The Journey Back. It will be shown here on WVIZ Channel 25 sometime later this year. So keep your eyes open for that one, so when it's going to be on there. And I thank you very much for coming here. I know some people would like to know more about this. And there are local phone numbers you can call. In fact, at Metro General, there is a number you can call. We're going to show it on the screen here in just a second. Ala Arsberg, thanks very much Thank for coming. Thank you very much. Here's where you can get more information about head trauma. And we'll return.
things made the traditional way. A birthday wish. Chantilly lace. Things made the traditional way you can eat. Eckrich smoked sausage. Still made with selected cuts of beef and spices. Still smoked over hardwood embers. And still handmade the traditional way since 1895. Eckrich, the very best from our house to yours. Hi there, glad you're here. This is the iWorks, and this is their promise. Glasses fast, glasses bright. Let me show you. First, an exam by a doctor of optometry. Then you pick out frames from thousands. Now here's why they're really fast. They make your glasses in their own lab. <laughs> they can do it in an hour. The price is right. The iWorks, glasses fast, glasses right. Open Sundays from noon to 5 p.m. you taste Progresso, you know it. There's no soup quite like it. Progresso has that sunny Italian flavor, a special goodness all its own. There's no soup like Progresso. Charlie Nirenberg goes to great lengths to stay on top of the products in his dairy marts, like these luscious treats from Good Humor, King Cone, new boysenberry ice cream cones at Almond Bars, and delicious Continental Deli glazed ham from Wilson's. Well, what store are you seeing next, Mr. N? Well, let's see. I got to hit three more states today. But to really stay on top, you have to go to great heights, too. Where to, Mr. N? Well, now, which way is the wind blowing? And he does. Good people, it must be dairy marts. Tomorrow we'll hear about those family ties that bind and gag. Irma Bombeck will be talking about that. Plus, the queen of courtesy, Marjabelle uh, and Stewart, young Stewart, Marjabelle young Stewart. First rule of etiquette is to get her name right. And also Linda Hirsch has soap news. And Woodridge High School brought us some gifts. Thank you for having us here. Yes, isn't that nice? Some pens and a little cup here. We'll give those out to some the chat. There it is right there. Thank you for coming. See you tomorrow. This week at IGA, save on Prego spaghetti sauce. All flavors in the 32-ounce jar are just $1.29. And get Maxwell Ounce coffee, now only $1.89 for the one-pound brick bag. Don't pass up all meat or all beef Oscar Mayer wieners in the one-pound package. Regular or bun length, buy one, get one free. At IGA, your dollar buys more. IGA knows what you want. Levy and Gruen, attorneys. Hi, I'm Hal Levy. We've handled thousands of injury claims. Folks call us because they know we'll discuss and personally handle their case. At Levy & Gruen, you need no money to start your car accident or job injury claim. I'm Mike Gruen. We're easy to reach with offices downtown at Southgate and in Willoughby. When you are hurt in a car accident, call Hal or me. When winning counts, count on Levy & Gruen, 861-5555. Whoa! What's wrong? I just sat on a string. What? Yeah, this couch has less stuffing than I do. I'm calling Renner Center. Hand me that phone. Right now, only Renner Center offers you the guaranteed lowest price in town on this beautiful three-piece living room group. Just $13.99 a week. That's right, just $13.99 a week, guaranteed. Now, this is comfortable, right, Lester? Not for me. Well, why not? Because I'm still sitting on your knee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Call Renner Center. It's that easy. Get your weather from Steve Brown and Terry Burhans on Channel 3 News. This is the NBC Television Network.